QR codes are everywhere, and today we'll explore a tool that can help us hack devices that can scan them on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. If you've been to a concert lately, you might have noticed one thing that most of the tickets have in common, and that is QR codes. Now, the reason that QR codes are everywhere is because they're easy to create, they're easy to use, and most people have devices that are capable of reading them. Because of this, there's also a variety of different custom tools that things like grocery stores or ticket scanners will use in order to read QR codes. And often these devices will have vulnerabilities because they're usually not updated very often. Now today, we're going to look at a tool that will basically encode some popular exploits into QR codes, hoping that when a device scans it, it'll read it and then actually execute the code. Now in order to do this, we'll need to have Python. And if you have any trouble setting this up, you can also check out the Nullbyte article linked in the description. As soon as you have a Linux system ready to go with Python installed, then we're ready to begin. Today, we're going to use a tool called QRGen. And this is really interesting because there's a lot of devices that are customized for various applications that might be running services that are vulnerable to various types of attacks. Now, this is also super easy to install. And in order to do so, you'll just need a Linux system, although I actually have not tried this on Mac OS and it may work as well. Uh, but because it's Python, I figured I would try it on Kali Linux and lo and behold, it worked the first time without any complications, except one little quirk in the way that uh, this is written, and that's actually the execution script is not right. That's, uh, it says qrcode.py, it's qrgen.py, but aside from that, these instru instructions are actually kind of a breeze to set up. So first, we're going to copy this, and in a fresh terminal window, we're going to paste the git clone uh, command. And here it's going to fail because I already have this path, but if you didn't have this installed, then it would download everything in the GitHub directory to your uh, folder that you're currently in. So once we cd change directory into qrgen, we can type ls and see all the various files that are there. And there is a requirements.txt file, which is really useful because it has all the various libraries that we'll need to run this. So if we want to do it easily, we can follow the instructions here and use pip3 install tack requirements.txt, which is a easy way of using pip3. Or if you just have pip, you can use python3 tack m pip install tack r requirements.txt. Obviously the first one is a little bit shorter, so I like it more. So once we do this, it should go through and make sure we have all the various libraries we need to use this Python tool. When it finishes installing, then we should be able to just run it and see what happens. So again, if we, oh, that's actually just still there, we can see it's qrgen.py. So after running python3 qrgen.py, we can see that we can now select one of two different options, either a word list or tack l for a number. Now, this is where things get interesting because it has a built-in list of various different payloads that could be useful depending on what you're going after. Now, this could be cross-site scripting, SQL injections, or a variety of different other things. So we're going to use, I guess, let's see, maybe a command injection as an example of the various types of QR codes you can generate that might be malicious depending on whether or not a particular device is vulnerable. Now, I also want to show off the word list feature. If we want to create a new word list, we can say nano word list dot text and type in a couple random payloads. These aren't real. Um, and then I'll add another one. All right, now we have our malicious code. Uh, it looks really bad. We'll save it. And if I type ls again, we should now see we have our wordlist.txt. So if we want to go back up and run python3 qr qrgen.py, tack w and then requirements.txt, it should generate some QR codes. 
Oh, let's see. Oh, it needs to be together. It should generate some QR codes based on the payloads that we ourselves created. And we'll test that in a little bit when we test some of the malicious ones that we generate as well. Now, the next thing we can do is actually use the TAC L option to select one of the pre-installed lists, which include a variety of different common exploits for maybe an unpatched service that's using SQL or something that might be vulnerable to something like string fuzzing. Now, I guess, let's see, we'll select number two for command injection and we'll type TAC L and then just two and we'll see if we can get this to generate some malicious QR codes for us to test. Now, if I go to the folder, I might even be able to see these being created. And oh, as you can see, we have a whole bunch of QR codes that the system is creating right now. And if we go, we can see, there we go. We have a lot of different malicious QR codes we can now test. So this is the perfect test bed for anyone who wants to take a device and test it. So we're gonna go ahead and take an Android phone and see if it can read these, and if so, what it actually sees. Well, I don't expect that we'll be able to actually exploit it, but if we were running something like a ticket scanner or something at a grocery store, it's likely we would be able to induce some strange behavior. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and test the payloads that we created. And to do that, we'll use this QR code reader and see what we can actually pull out of the payloads. And it pulls them out rather quickly, so I'm gonna to have to limit the ones that I have on screen uh, so it doesn't just immediately grab them. So let's go ahead and pick one of the first ones we did. And we can see that this is QR code. Um, it actually actually wasn't able to display it all the way. Uh, oh, we can see the pipe character. So this is actually, it looks like it's interpreting it. I remember typing the pipe character into the payloads that we generated. And as we read these, we can see that they're unusual or like break characters. <laughs> you can see this is a trying to get it to escape and then try to ping something. So if something has network activity, this one is trying to uh, ETC into a password directory and it could display the password to the device on the screen. This is requesting the ID of the device. So as you can see, these usually consist of something like a pipe symbol, something that is trying to get us to be able to either access more parts of the device that we shouldn't have access to, or actually do something that we're just really not supposed to do. And here we go. That's uh, some really malicious looking code that uh, will probably get us deeper into maybe a database or some other thing that uses structured calls that isn't expecting a call like this and would escape it and then attempt to run something like this, such as this dollar sign and then in closed string, who am I? So as you can see, there are a bunch of different <laughs> malicious things that we could now run on something that we have permission to and potentially discover a number of different problems in the way that this device is configured. That could allow someone with a single malicious demand command to get a whole bunch of free tickets, a special price on groceries, or some other thing that you didn't intend on when you designed your system. So this is a great way of making sure that there aren't any vulnerabilities in a QR code implementation, or if you're a pen tester, maybe find an interesting way of exploiting something that nobody else has thought of through a network connected device that uh, maybe, whoa, this is a big one, a network connected device that maybe uh, uses something like QR codes in order to process stuff. So this is, I think, a really exciting project and the more exploits you can think of, the more you can cram into this because it's highly customizable and allows you to create payloads for whatever you want. QR Gen can create a lot of different QR codes that may or may not be effective against a particular device that scans QR codes. Now, this could be a ticket scanner, it could be a supermarket scanner, or it could be someone's cell phone, but in general, it's not a great idea to test this against something really critical or something you don't have permission to, because depending on the payload, it could potentially disable it or cause it to display erratic behavior. If you're at work and choose to test this on your ticket scanner right before a big concert, you could get in a lot of trouble, so please make sure that you have permission to do so and that you're not testing this on a critical device that's about to be used. If you have any problems testing this, you can check out the Nullbyte article linked in the description, and you can also hit me up on Twitter if you have any ideas for future episodes. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.